Hello, everyone. Welcome to the kernel testing and dependability uh, microconference. So just to start, to get started, so we have um, some people attending online with big blue button, big blue button. Feel free to leave any questions on the chat there. Unlike last time, there's no um, people attending live on the video on big blue, big blue button. But if you leave a question, um, we'll um, forward them to the, uh, the speakers. And uh, thank you to our sponsors as well, of course. And so we have a pretty packed schedule, so I won't talk, uh, I won't talk for too long now. We have um, uh, Veronica and Mark talking about integrating testing with maintainers' workflows. So if you want to come here and then I'll pass the mic on to you. Of course, we have, if you have a question, raise your hand, we'll give you um, uh, a throwable microphone as well. So hi, I'm Veronica. I'm the tech lead for CK project. We're doing uh, continuous integration for uh, kernel testing, both for Red Hat and for various upstream trees. Uh, and I'm Mark Brown. I do uh, I do kernel stuff, and um, occasionally that involves uh, dabbling in testing. Um, so the goal of this session is that we're um, we should want to have a discussion about how we can get. Uh, maintainer and testing or maintainer workflows and testing workflows joined up with each other because at the minute um, it's not ideal the way that's working. Um, so we've got a few slides prepared here, but um, the goal is that, this, uh, that the slides will not take very long and then we'll spend the rest of the time discussing. Uh, but even with our slides, uh, feel free to sort of interrupt um, is, uh, whenever you feel like. So if I can work out how to advance the page with this. Nope, that goes full screen. Oh yeah, so there is, yeah. <laughs> uh, computers, who can, I don't know. <laughs> so, um, so, so the, the problem space is basically we have um, a lot of people um, working on developing the kernel, obviously, uh, and we also have a lot of people who are working on testing the kernel in various capacities. So um, some of that is that we have people working on uh, writing tests, uh, either as part of developing something, they need to make sure that the thing they developed works, they wrote a test, or um, is just a separate effort where somebody's decided that they'd like to improve kernel quality and they just want to write some tests, they go ahead and do that independently of any active development. And um, in addition to people writing the tests, we also have people who actually who sit down and run the tests. And obviously, a lot of the time, the people writing the tests will also run their tests. But there is um, there's also a community of people like Veronica who um, mainly run the tests, uh, or mainly take existing tests and run them in an effort to monitor the quality of things they're releasing, or uh, in an effort to try and help um, upstream development. Um, and often, these two groups don't really work together very well or at all. They, they don't communicate very much, um, and that's uh, unfortunate. So what we'd like to do is talk about ways in which we can get um, the developers and the testers uh, communicating with each other. So the, the testers are testing things that the developers care about, and the people doing the development are providing the testers with the, uh, the tools and information they need to verify that what's being shipped uh, actually works in a useful fashion. And Fine. Um, okay, so, um, so there's varying levels of um, success with us at the minute. Um, some of it, some places, things are working um, really quite well. So, for example, uh, KSelf test is really heavily used by um, some of the uh, the kernel subsystems that use it at all, uh, and it's also uh, something that's been picked up by quite a lot of the uh, the testing systems. There's some rough edges in places but um, it's an area where everybody's joined up with each other. Um, similarly for the graphics test suite, IGT, um, I think that has an expansion that isn't Intel graphics test anymore, but I can't remember what it is. Um, that's something where uh, QA people know that it exists, developers actively use it, 
everything works great. V4L compliance, same story. It's um, a requirement to get stuff into the kernel, but um, uh, it's, and it's also something that uh, testers are uh, aware of and they're picking up and using it. However, there's some other issues where it's a bit less uh, joined up. So um, XFS tests is heavily used by the file system developers and some testing people use it, but a lot of the testing efforts um, just don't run it at all for a bunch of reasons. Uh, one of the big issues with, X, uh, with running XFS tests is that it's quite demanding of the uh, hardware it runs on. So um, actually deploying it um, will... Is the, the cash box isn't on? That's on. <laughs> this one's on. Try test. Oh, testing works. <laughs> Thank you. This is an excellent test suite. Um, no, XFS test doesn't have particularly high demands of the hardware it runs on. Uh, I, I run it on my laptop all the time. What it does have is significant, uh, you need significant expertise to set it up. Um, and you need significant expertise to interpret the results. It, 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 it depends on what hardware you're looking at. It, it can eat SD cards and uh, things uh, like there's no tomorrow. Oh, okay, so, yeah, that, that's, that's fair. I mean, I, I, I run it on my laptop on, on a KVM, and I, I think, you know, if, if I can run it on my laptop for a couple of hours, you know, anyone should be able to. But, I mean, you're, you're, you're quite right. If you're running it on real hardware, it will absolutely chew through an SD card. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's, that, that was what I was thinking when I said demanding. Uh, yeah, in terms of actually running it, like, it, it's, yeah. Interpretation can be an issue, but yeah, in terms of, it's not that it needs a high-end system, it's just that it can, uh, some systems are very low-end or um, not very durable, and obviously it hammers I.O. for obvious reasons. Um, yeah, yeah, but the other thing I'll mention is that there are various people who have set up uh, different turnkey setups for XFS tests, you know, Louise has KDevOps. Yep. I have my uh, KVM XFS test, GCE XFS test, Android XFS test that, you know, all run from a single test appliance. But they all generally tend to have fairly strong assumptions about your runtime environment because of the interaction with storage. And so it's not that bad, but you know, if you have your own test environment that you've already optimized other tests for, the turnkey systems that either Louise or I have set up might not necessarily work with your infrastructure, and that's a problem. Yeah, and, and knowing what to do for your infrastructure and how to solve the problems for it. I mean, yeah, Kent Overstreet has um, something that runs XFS tests as well. Yeah, and yeah. I know Yosef does for ButterFS. I mean, a number of us have actually yeah. developed our own homegrown test runners. Yeah, so the, and, and this is yeah. one, one of the areas where it would be good to have a discussion, I think, about how we share the knowledge about how you set up an environment to usefully uh, run uh, run these things. I mean, audio is in a similar position. Uh, yeah. uh, next thing on the slide, where, where it's to test it, you often need some, Ted, there's, uh, you, oft, you often need uh, or some uh, physical wiring of your system. Uh, which isn't necessarily immediately obvious and uh, easy. Yeah, to, to me, how to wrap XFS tests to just get test output in a standard format, that's the solved problem. The next thing that I'm looking at and wanting to talk to more people about is how do we get a common test format that works for XFS tests and everything else so we can get everything into the same CI. Uh, and I've, I've heard of some talk about there being a CI that just ingests things in different formats. I think it would be a lot sooner in the long term if we can just get things to output in a common format from the start. So I'm not super familiar with, familiar with XFS tests, but don't we already have KTAP for that? Like that's the format at least the KSELF test uses for outputting test results. Is there any reason that, that XFS tests would use something different? Yeah. Uh, so XFS test uses the JUnit XML format, which is a superset uh, in terms of the information you can express in KTAP. It would not be hard to write a Python script 
that took JUnit XML and like spit it out into KTAP. The reason why the XFS test folks probably aren't all that interested in switching to KTAP is JUnit actually is much more expressive, has a lot more information that we want. But if the idea is just to simply, you know, ingest it into a common CI, that's actually, again, not hard. It's, it's a Python script, that's and it's not a hard Python script. Could, could, could you give some examples? The, the, the question was, can you give some examples? You're just going to have to pass these. <laughs> yeah, Ted can't answer you without the, the catch ball. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Sorry, well, uh, could you give us some examples of what you can express with J? And I take it JUnit is for expressing test results? Yes. Yeah. What, what can you express with that? Uh, in addition to uh, pass, fail, we get skipped. And we can also get a quick summary of what the failure actually was. Um, and although I don't actually use it, JUnit also has the capability of uh, putting like the D message um, or the system, uh, the, the actual test output failure that makes it much easier for people to interpret what the hell actually happened other than it failed, right? Because this is the other thing that would be really useful is if you're going to have other people run tests for you, um, and then you want the developers to do something with it. Yeah. yeah, one of two things needs to happen. Either it has to be trivially easy to reproduce the failure, not rerun the test, reproduce the failure. Those two are subtly different. Ideally, not you. Yeah, or do that. all of the test artifacts, yeah. D message, you know, the output from the test script, as much detail as possible, right? And again, those of, those of us who are developers who do this, you know, I have a tar.xz file that has all of the test artifacts. It's uploaded into Google Cloud Storage, and I can share it with other developers who I want to ask them about for when, when I want to ask them for help because I have all of the test artifacts, right? And you know, that's something that as a developer is incredibly useful. What we really want for that is just a directory that tests can dump like core files. We want to make sure that if there's a core file being left behind, that that gets recorded as a, a kind of test failure. Yeah, yeah uh, and, and if um, and, and some way of telling the people running the test what information it's likely to be useful for them to collect and share, um, because it's not necessarily... Um, Just collect it all, storage is cheap. Well, the idea, but what, what is all, do you... Um, you can go overkill and, and, try and end up sharing so much stuff that the developers go, I can't even find what I'm looking for in here. Uh, depending on what you're doing, some, some things are more focused than others. I, I think if you just have a directory for results per, per subtest, has to be down to the subtest level, then yeah, that's all we need. Is it, which is something on the, test, on the person writing the test side is to, uh, to uh, work, uh, work out what to collect. Well, then we have to plumb that through to the test, but yeah. the starting point is, like yeah, if, if so. not tap then JUnit, and we need we need something to start targeting. Yeah. So, so doesn't like, uh, Linaro test string already do some of that stuff when when they if you go into Linaro uh, LKTP test site, they collect a lot of information. That would be a good one to look at. They, I think they gather D message as well. Yes. And it, it's not necessarily the test author, mm -hmm. it's the test running environment. That's what I'm talking right? about. Yes, yes. Yes. So, yes. so, for example, you, you, know, you don't need to tell the, the test author how to say D message, right? It's the test running infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, yeah. what I mean is the person writing the tests, uh, it, it, it could be useful to say a D message would be useful here, or here are the... Uh, you know, the, the test author said, uh, said like for, for Alison, we yeah. have a, a script that you can run on your machine that will go and grovel around in all the um, uh, user space exposed to interfaces and, and dump everything out so that when somebody writes, uh, sends, uh, wants to send us a bug report they, um, or a test, test failure, we can say to them, just collect this and it will tell us everything we need to know. Yeah, I mean, so again, this is in my test infrastructure, right, is I can actually pass in a set of shell script fragments that get executed at various hook points. So I can set up trace points, collect the trace points, and then, yes, it's dumped into the test artifact file. Um, and again, you know, 
it's not hard. It's just everybody builds their own system that is like purposed for them. And uh, I think part of the problem is, yes. you know, you need to fund someone who is going to actually do something that's more general. Otherwise, what ends up happening is each kernel developer does something that works pretty well for them. I've actually tried to go out of my way to like actually add documentation and try to get other people to use it. But again, I'm doing it in my own spare time, right? If I actually had someone helping me to improve the test running infrastructure, it would go a lot farther than a single developer who is only going to optimize his particular workflow, right? So, <laughs> so let me talk a bit about where this is going, what the dream is. If we can get one common output format that every test, everything on this list outputs to, and we can run them all from the same CI, then the next step I, is to get something like get maintainers, but I, for tests, where we can query for every CNH file that we changed, what tests need to run. That's exactly the point that I heard at the end. Yep. Like it's a, it's really hard to even figure out what test subsystems are running, what test maintainers are running. It's not documented anywhere around the kernel, and get maintainers or some other similar file is actually a really good area where to share this. So this is also twofold. It's not only for the CI systems or test runners. It's also for the developers who try to contribute to the yep. files or kernel in general and. Uh, as newbies, they might not understand really what uh, tests to run when they are submitting their patches. So having a location to that uh, shares what tests are being run, uh, what tests the sub maintainers rely on, uh, and what you should try to run yourself before submitting your patch, do not waste everybody's time. Mm -hmm. Having all of this documented would be a good first step what you are seeing about the uh, shared format for everything, that's a really great dream to have, but it's very far probably from the reality with the amount of different kinds of tests that people have. Well, you so have we to, need to start somewhere. Yeah, but you also have to talk about what the goal is though, so we know how to direct our efforts. So I, I kind of just interject here and say that I think one of the big challenges is that all the sub, many of the subsystems have bootstrapped their own test frameworks, like even inside of KSELF tests. So like RCU torture is totally its own thing. And so I yeah. just wanted to say that in my talk, I'm actually gonna be specifically talking about that part of it. Um, like- How do we wrap all those? Yeah, like do, do we want to yes. structure test suites to follow a standard configuration so that you as a maintainer can express how your test should be run to CI systems so that you don't have to like go into every kernel CI and patchwork and everything and be like, this is how you run VPF and that's how you run yeah, RCU that, torture. Yeah, that would be really nice to help. What I think we could do, I'm not there yet in my own stuff, but this is what I've been working towards, is a test should be just a program that returns results on standard output in some standard format so that we can parse out subtests, success failure, and so on and so on. That, that is a self test. <laughs> but can you can you treat XFS tests as a case self test? Probably, yeah. This is case self test. I'll, I'll tell you later. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so RCU test is a, a one of the ones that hasn't been really uh, ported over to KSELF test. So it does, that's one exception under the directory if you look at it. Uh, but rest of the tasks under KSELF test, they all, they all run. They all, you can run them with one command and they generate KDAV output and then you can look at, look at that. So that's there. So some tests on the slide that I have seen, uh, there is a V4L compliance. And then also, I think um, it had the uh, K XFS tests. We talked about it when we started KF, uh, KSELF test, and some of them we decided that they are better off as on their own, especially uh, V4L compliance because of the dependency on some of the libraries and graphics. So, so XFS might not fit that. Uh, model, but we have left out some things. Um, it's a conscious choice. Maybe it's something that we, it's time for us to revisit. Yeah, I, I think part of it is also about dependencies. Um, so for example, for XFS tests, there's a lot of setup that you do once and then you run a whole suite of tests. And that's much more efficient than redoing that setup before and after, you know, the 500 odd tests that are in XFS tests. XFS test also requires a lot of, um, you know, DM setup, LVM. There are a lot of tools, user space tools that you have to have installed that a typical tester 
might not necessarily have installed on their system. And, and, right. and you, you also have like, so, so XFSTIS is one of the ones that can run for quite a long time, for example. So uh, you, you have different resource requirements for the test and testers need to know what they're getting in for into when they start running the test. Yeah, so, and again, I think and have control over it. Yeah, and again, it depends on what you're doing, right? Yeah. So what I tell my developers after they make a really, really stupid mistake is download this repo, read the KVM XFS test quick tests, and run KVM XFS test smoke before you send me a patch, it will take half an hour to run, right? Now, what I do is I actually run 12 different configs in the full auto setup. Each of those configs takes about two and a half to maybe four hours if you're running on XFS. That's fine. I've sharded it to 12 different VMs in Google Cloud, and I get the, I get the results back in two and a half hours. And I do that before I send the pull request to Linus. But not everybody needs to do that, right? I do that before I send the pull request, but that's not what I ask individuals to run, yeah. right? And that's gonna be true for, I think, many of these sort of test infrastructures is there's what do you want the end users to run? There's what does the maintainer run before they send to Linus? And then you actually have what some of the really um, you know, perfectionist QA people might want to run, which is looking for flaky tests, which as Louise has pointed out, sometimes there are individual XFS tests that fail one in 200 or one in 800 tries. So he will actually run each test hundreds of times looking for the flaky test failures. I don't do that before I push to Linus. Other people do, right? And again, what is considered the right amount to run and there is significant disagreement between the people who use it. So even if I wrote down, you know, gospel according to Ted, this is what you should, I, I think you should do, you know, there'll be 12 different people who will disagree with me. <laughs> I think we actually can and should standardize a lot of that stuff. My dream is, and what I've actually got implemented for my own stuff, is we want a CI that we can point to the Git branch. I've got a Git log view of, of test results. Uh, so results are all indexed by SHA-1. So before I pull I, someone's code, I have that as well. <laughs> amazing. Let's let's get it all. Let, let's get all our tests uh, pulling in, uh, let, ingesting into something like that, and then we can have a common set of tests that anyone is expected to have run, and it runs on just at that at that point. Getting a cluster to run that stuff is a small ask if we've got the tooling in place. So, so just a question, how many maintainers have actually declared what tests they want uh, submitters to run? <laughs> yeah, like the V4L people do, um, it, it, so, um, some of it varies by, like I, uh, like I maintain things with uh, the drivers and I, I can't, even even if I ask people to run tests, they they could just lie to me. I have no way of verifying anything. <laughs> but but do you, do you like have a list somewhere? Hey, before you send a patch, please at least run these tests. Uh, first, um, uh, for, for some things, other things, the, it's dif uh, difficult to test because um, of, uh, the way they plumb into the system. If we get yeah. test results indexed by SHA one with the Git log view, then we don't have to trust people. We can just look. Are, the, are your results in the in the database? We have to trust whoever put the stuff in the database. <laughs> Not like everybody should file well, some kind of testing yeah. before they submit something. It's just like getting yeah. getting the yeah. testing. So <laughs> that, that you are the absolutely right that there is no good information for people. So. Um, uh, we did. We went and did some documentation a little while ago. Who went to use what be, between K self test and K unit? I think it's a great idea to have a document under the testing um, docs uh, dev process, having which tests to run for if, when you touch a subsystem. We think it's self-explanatory because K self test does have directories named after subsystems, but having a clear documentation, you're absolutely right that we need that. Yeah, this work is great for self-test, uh, but there was uh, LTP mentioned, XFS test. There are other subsystems that uh, might not have self-test or K-unit. Uh, 
but the maintainer of that subsystem most likely still runs some set of scripts or at least something before submitting the pull request. So one idea that we were thinking about was what if we added a new entry to the maintainer's file so that under <laughs> each subsystem you have a please run these tests before you send me a patch. You know, here is just, you know, path to a script to run or path to a document describing uh, the tests. I've also got to jump back and push back on something. Documentation should not be required to run tests. Tests should be fully self-contained. And our case self-test tests are not there yet. You have to dig around to figure out, I know at least for tracing, what are the config options that have to be enabled for these tests to run? And that takes a while. How do you make the scripts, how do you make the test scripts work on all different distribution if they have dependencies on different kinds of hardware? There's a config file. Sometimes you just need a lot of things documented because it's not really easy to automate it across all the different environments that are supported on Linux. Even even for file system tests, right, which don't, we shouldn't particularly need special hardware. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of some cases where, for example, there's a library function in, in the page cache that four file systems use. Yeah. How on earth do we say, if you've changed that function, you need to run this test with one of these four file systems? I mean, right, that was my question. It's like, oh, what tests am I interested in? Well, I just redefined memcopy. So all of them? Like, uh, but, well, I mean, you know what you're doing, and, and, and really, some, somebody who is less skilled than you probably shouldn't be touching them copy. Well, <laughs> but I still want the test to run. Yeah. Let's, let, let's not let perfect be the enemy of good. Let's at least get a mapping for every C and H file. These are tests that should be run when this changes. Yeah. I, 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 what about providing, I don't know, some sort of a KVM image with all these tests preloaded, and all you need to do is load your own kernel yeah, onto so it? No. So I really hate to interrupt the discussion, but we still have one point and we have like three minutes to get it yeah. through, so uh, I would really like to just uh, get that done and then we can continue the discussion maybe in the hallway track uh, if people want to. So we talked about uh, how to figure out where what tests to run. Uh, we mentioned that actually getting the tests to run might be a problem, but uh, another problem that we do have is uh, interpreting the test failures. The test uh, might fail because of infrastructure issues. They, the failures might not even be 100% reproducible, so bisecting the failures is very unreliable. Uh, there can be also, for example, a patch that exposes a failure, so the test starts failing, but the patch that uh, would be pointed to with the bisection is not the cause of the failure, so you can get a lot of false reports just by trying to bisect the failures. I tried to talk to people on the automated testing call last week, asking about uh, what people are doing before reporting the uh, failures from the CI system upstream, and everybody said there needs to be a kernel person who understands that subsystem to look into the first failures, and that's what we've been doing too. The issue is that how do you make this scalable? How do you make this uh, kind of working automated? The people who usually run the tests, uh, we had that as a separate category in the previous slide, they are usually not experts on every subsystem. So we really do need involvement from the developers and maintainers uh, to help triage the failures when they first occur, because they know what got merged, they understand the patches that uh, were pushed to the gate, and uh, if they see the failure, and since the tests we are trying to run, they need to be something the maintainers rely on. They should be able to like point fairly closely to what could help potentially cause the failure of the test. So that's, that's the other problem that we have and uh, which we would like to hopefully find some involvement from people to solve. <laughs>